Mayor Turner created the Greater Houston Storm Relief Fund. One of the things that uh, we identified a goal of immediately placing people in hotels, and that was to ensure, and as Mayor Turner wanted, to ensure that there was a place that they could have where they could keep their dignity. After three weeks of keeping people in the hotels, we uh, worked with them for a number of weeks to identify the next housing opportunity. And the reason why is because we wanted to pivot the use of the funds from paying for hotels to getting people back into apartments and then to start working with these nonprofits like the United Way, like Catholic Charities, like Neighborhood Centers, to start providing the wraparound services, as well as working with the federal government to bring down caseworkers, which would be doing uh, midterm uh, casework management, or case management, which would be three to six months, and then as well as long-term management, which will take six, six months to two years. And the ultimate goal was to for us to understand and recognize that the people who suffered the most, the greatest, from this flood are not going to have their issues resolved within two months or three months. This is going to be a very long process for them. And the city of Houston are not the experts in regards to providing those wraparound services. That's just not a, a function that we do. There are nonprofits out there who are the experts. And so when we brought in those nonprofit workers, there's roughly 60 to 65 people who are currently working in the city of Houston to manage not just the Greens Point area, although that is the majority, but everywhere where there were flood victims in the greater Houston area. And uh, to my understanding, well, what we did was the 130 plus, it was about 100, north of 170 families that we directly touched. Um, we continued to uh, provide uh, case management in the sense that we would call and check on them. Uh, we have since passed that off to the experts, the case managers that were brought in from the federal government or funded by FEMA. And uh, that is currently being managed by United Way. And then lastly, what I was saying, uh, and I know you can appreciate this, I don't like shooting in the dark. So if you'll provide me a list of the families that you talk to so that we can, we can talk to them, then I think we can follow up with them. But I, I know if, if, we, if the shoe was on the other hand, you would want specifics and you would want me to be transparent. And so I'm gonna ask you to be very transparent and uh, provide us with a list of those families. And if there are families that are in situations that are as bad as they were prior to April the 18th, I don't want them living in that sort of situation. And I can assure you, the quicker you give me that list, the quicker the people will leave City Hall and go out to Greensport and check on them. That I can assure you. Um, yep. Yes, sir. Three very specific questions on how to you first. Uh, you say that you you would prefer whichever structure is final built to stay in District G. Are you concerned that the cost factor, which seems to be crucial here, is going to happen again because of the, the price of the land in District G? Also, um, do you know for sure, has anyone from the HHA told you directly they have to be ruled out that site already? Say, so, so, I didn't hear the last Has part. anyone from the HHA told you that they have completely ruled out building at 2640 Fountain View? And finally, could you expand a little bit on, on your conversation with uh, Secretary Castro about this? Yes, let me do the first one. Let me go to the, your last question first and then move back. Um, this, this project has been on um, on the books for a while, okay? And it predates me coming in. Um, I was hearing from, from some um, who said that if we didn't proceed with this particular project, that we were going to be sued, that HUD really wanted us to proceed with it. My first conversation was with Secretary Castro um, more than, I want to say, a month and a half, two months ago, in which he called me to talk about the Fountain View project. And I told him at that time I was doing a detail, uh, taking a detailed look at Fountain, Brook, uh, Fountain View uh, to see whether or not it is a project that we need to move forward with. I wanted to make my own assessment, but that I was certainly committed to affordable workforce housing. And Secretary Castro, along with his brother, have known me for some time, and they know my commitment to affordable housing. And so he's, you know, he understood. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in D.C and I visited directly with Secretary Castro. And what I indicated to him is that I am committed to affordable housing, and I'm committed to affordable housing throughout the city of Houston. And it is a delicate balance, because there are areas in, in, in uh, uh, community, neighborhoods in what we would call non-opportunity districts, and I certainly hate that phraseology, um, because I think you can live anywhere in the city and still 
um, move forward and still uh, uh, excel. Uh, but, but there are areas and non-opportunity areas that need affordable housing. They need housing uh, because if you don't have housing in those areas, communities will shrink and communities will die. Schools will close or be consolidated. You're not going to get retail. And so we need housing throughout the city of Houston. And at the same time, I certainly recognize that you, we need to place housing in quote-unquote opportunity areas or give people the opportunity to live anywhere in the city, and I understood that. Um, and so what I asked him, if, if I elected based on my analysis not to move forward with this particular project, would he be opposed or adverse to that decision? And what he indicated to me is that, Mayor, we certainly understand that. If you decide not to make this, that decision, we understand. And HUD will work with you. Uh, we simply want the commitment for housing in the city of Houston. But we certainly understand the delicate balance that you're having to face, um, not only in this city, but other cities similarly situated. Um, and so, um, uh, after doing my analysis, talking with him uh, and, and others, and looking at the price tag on this particular one, $240,000 per unit, I made the decision that it was not cost prudent to move forward with this particular project at this particular location. Um, but what I indicated to Councilman Travis, uh, as well as to other uh, elected officials when I made my decision, is that I'm committed to affordable housing in District G, as well as every district uh, throughout the city of Houston. For $240,000 per unit, I think we can do some, we can really provide some um, excellent transformative housing uh, throughout this city and not only provide a uh, housing unit, but we can also provide some transformation in that neighborhood as well. And, that, and I'm interested in building complete communities. And we'll look throughout District G. And I'm looking at, and what I've indicated to the Housing Authority, put out an RFP in District G to try to get the best price in District G uh, but do it through an RFP project uh, 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 concept, and I've indicated that to, uh, to the Houston Housing Authority. I think it would be wise and not prudent to proceed with this particular project. I am disappointed that the Houston Housing Authority has not moved forward with other housing projects that are on their books right now, and they're not building housing in other areas of the city. We need affordable housing throughout the city. And everything should not just be hinged on this particular project. You know, I think you can do more than one thing at one time. And so I'm disappointed that we are not building housing. Uh, we haven't already done more construction of housing throughout the city of Houston. And that's what I want to see. I don't want us to see, get so tied up on one project that we're not building housing in other areas. And I mean good looking quality housing. Because let me tell you, even in quote unquote non-opportunity districts, people want housing. They just don't want that same stuff that people have been getting for years and years that doesn't enhance their communities, okay? So if you build it right, and if you get buy-in from the very beginning, and you allow people in the neighborhood and the communities to be a part of that process where they, where they know what they're getting and they're participating in what they're getting, then the response can certainly be a very positive one. And I know that's the case because I know what has occurred even in the area in which I currently live. So okay. that's a long way of answering your question. Yeah. I hope I answered all your yeah. questions. Just, just, uh, the, the HHA have been told you directly they are completely ruling out 2640 pounds a Well, I think it would be wise for them to rule it out. <laughs> they are appointed by the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know any other way to tell you. <laughs> Would not be wise. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, going back to the, the Zika virus. Let's follow up on uh, one of Rebecca's questions on flooding. How okay. 